Trucker Gamer here. So today we'll take a look at the Thrustmaster Freestyler Bark. So this is basically a handlebar controller. And we'll be taking a look at the PlayStation 2 version as well as the PC version. So there's two different variations for it. So this is the box for the PS2 version. So that's the handlebar controller there. So the cool image of a Bark. Thrustmaster logo. Grab. I think it says grab the whole shot. Down here it says GP mode and MX mode. So basically motocross versus um, GP street bike racing. It says vibration function compatible. For use with PlayStation, PlayStation 2, PS1. Top of the box just has another image of the same thing. Side of the box shows you uh, the sit-on position as well as the desktop position. It says choose between an MX or GP mode, play in desktop or sit on position. And on the back of the bike, it shows a bit more about your uh, desktop versus sit on positions. And it says MX GP switch. Basically, MX mode is your motocross mode, which does the basically a 95 degree angle, and GP mode does a 45 degree angle. So you got eight action buttons, digital gear shift lever, which is that one just there. Analog brake lever, select start mode buttons, 8-way D-pad, desktop position, that's that one, analog accelerator handle. It says on position, rubber textured hand grips. Okay, so that is that is the box. So, nothing really fantastic, the PC version of the box looks almost identical, except the controller is black. So let's go on to the actual handlebars. Alright, so these are the actual Freestyler box. So this one is the PS2 version, which belongs to that box. And this one here is the PC version. So the PC version is black in colour, um, black all the way on the base. And the PS2 version is blue and blue on the base. Okay, so if we'll, first off, we'll take a look at the PS2 version, and then we'll look at the PC version, which they do look the same. That's why I decided to do these in the same video, because they, they're pretty much identical if you, if I just move out of here you can see they are identical in terms of what they do and everything like that same on the other side which I'll just swap them around that way you can see the other side as well as you can see they look identical alright so this is the PS2 version so first off you can see from the front it looks like a bark handles you turn it around Looks like a like a gas tank almost with a little little screw top there. Um, so this is your analog um, your gear shift one. That's for shifting gears. Uh, this one here is your brake lever. Um, you've also got basically on this side you've got a throttle a twist throttle. You can see there. got the X and circle buttons and you've got start select and mode and down here you've got the R1 and R2 buttons on the other side the L2 and L1 buttons you got a d-pad here and here is the motocross GP switch mode just focus so you can switch to GP or you can go to cross it's a square and triangle button and that's the other handlebar so basically, you use it just like you would do a handlebar, alright? So in a bike game, say on PS2 you want to play, you'd be grabbing, you'd be accelerating by this one, braking with this, changing gear with this one, doing all your normal controls with the other buttons, and steering like a normal bike. Alright, so you can see that steering function there. It steers just like a normal bike. And you can even go a bit further. So it's... It steers just like a normal bike, so you'd be practically steering just like a normal bike turning. And that cross and GP mode just makes a difference to how far down. So, like, on a, if you're doing street racing, which is GP, the street box, then of course you're going to be going when you're turning, you do much sh sharper turns that actually go down. If you're doing the dirt box, which is the motocross or MX, those ones um, you're turning the handlebars a bit differently, so you're not turning much as going straight down. 
like um, close to the ground, you're actually just turning the handlebar a bit more to do tricks and stuff like that. So depending on which game you're playing, just switch the switch and that'll go to the right mode. So now basically you can see when I actually turn it before, it moves the base. And that's because just sitting on a table like this is not necessarily the recommended way to play it. So there's two different ways you can actually set this up and play it. The first one, of course, is using the sit-on position. So for that, you use a stand that it comes with. I know, it looks really weird, but how it works on the bottom of this one. This thing basically slides in here. You do have to get a bit to get alignment. Hold on a second. I just completely missed the alignment there. See, there's a little clip here, basically. You can see there? That little clip goes into that hole there. And that aligns it. There we go. Okay, so you end up with a really kind of long end like that. Okay, and the idea is you sit on this end. That's right. This part you sit on. So on your chair, you sit on this, and then you've got that between your legs. I know it's, it's meant to actually um, replicate having. So you'd be sitting on this part here. And having this part between your legs, so virtually, um, I just it's not a proper position here, but um, it stabilizes it basically, and it makes it more closer. But I find using that, it's really close to you, um, so you don't get much room for your arms. You're more like this. So I don't know, it's it's personal preference, but that's what that um, stand that it comes with. Because also, when you're sitting on it, you also got to be careful because um, it's very easy to break this if you don't like clip it on there properly and you sit on it and you really ruffle this part because it's only that one and the other clip in the front really holding it so this part is easy to break if you don't sit on it properly because this this is where your legs are going basically right here because that actually holds it down onto the seat and your butt pretty much sits on this part so it's one way of doing it another way of doing it let's just pull this other stand off here Another way of doing it is to put it on the actual surface of a desk. And to do this, there's two different processes. First, these use clips in the side. They pop out, all right, and that wheel slides all the way forward, okay? And that clips down. This tank thing here unscrews, and this thing comes up. So what you're doing is you're actually slipping this part here. You're slipping this part here onto your desk. And you can make it smaller or larger depending on how big your desk is. So your desk slips into there. And then you've got the handles like this. So that's that's on the surface of your desk. And you're steering like that. Which is a, a way more um, solid way of doing it. So that clips on a surface. Which I don't really have any surface right by me to actually clip it onto. Um, but it basically uh, would clip onto the end of the desk sort of like that. Alright, and then you would tighten it. when it's tight enough it'll just sit on the desk and then you've got a pair of handlebars to use okay it's a much more solid way to do it and the handlebars lean up more forward so I I, I don't know I find it feels like a more like a bike that way it's my preferred way of using these handlebars so you know but you can either have it that way on a like a surface of a desk or you can have it the other way on the laptop. Or if you wanted to just put up with it actually moving around or maybe, I don't know, stick something down to actually hold it, you could do it this way as well. Um, you just have to make sure when you hold it, you can actually turn properly. Or even hold it with your legs so you can actually turn properly. Which comes on the sitting on position sort of thing. But yeah, so it's pretty cool. Um, it works with pretty much all the PS2 uh, bike games and everything like that. You could probably even use it with car games, but I mean, you probably wouldn't want to since a car game is better to use it like a, a wheel. Uh, with a bike game, though, of course, you want to use it. Uh, you could even use it for like jet ski games and stuff like that. You know, something with handlebars. Uh, jet ski, even um, your MTV, you know, games like that with the quads. You could even use it for that. So it is versatile, so anything with a handlebar sort of thing you can use it for. So, And it's pretty cool, and you get a lot of turn, as you can see from that. And it's cool to accelerate by that way as well. So it feels like you are actually riding a bike. It's, it's yeah, I, I really like these. They, they're really good quality. They're made by Thrustmaster. Um, they're pretty cool to have, and they are really cheap. I mean, you can find the PS2 version 
pretty cheap and pick it up really nice quality as well, like in a box or with the little sit-on stand thing. Pretty all-in-one package, really cheaply as well. So that's the PS2 version. Um, the PC version is pretty much identical in every way. Um, that's it's, The black color is the PC version, so you can still use that as your analog gear. That is your brake. You still got your accelerator here. Um, instead of basic your PlayStation buttons, you've got one, two, um, one, three, two, four, sorry, and then it's like 10, 11, 12. You got your cross and GP switches still. You got your D pad, and of course, it still turns just like the PS2 version does. And the same thing as the PS2 version, it has this um, guy here, so you can have it, have it on the actual desk. Like with lifting that up, or you can pull these things out and push it forward to actually do it. So either sit on position or on a desk. Good thing about this one for the PC, it is USB, so it's compatible with multiple. It's pretty much just plug and play. You don't really need to have much drivers for it. I think there was a very small kind of driver that you can get for the, the PC version, but I mean, most of the functions it'll pick it up like a normal like analog gamepad. So you know you could just use it as plug and play. Um, so overall, the PC one is actually more rarer than the actual PS2 one. PS2 one is really common. You can pretty much find them most places. The PC one, however, is a bit more rarer. It does not come up as often. I don't have the PC one with the box. I've only got the PS2 one with the box. But um, yeah, the PC one was a lot harder to find, I find than getting the PS2 version. The PS2 version I got almost straight away. So the PC one, once again, can be used for all bark games. Um, you could also use it for the uh, jet ski games, you know, MTV games, all that type of thing. Um, same sort of thing. Uh, overall, both of them, whatever platform you decide to go on, whether it be PC or PS2, both of them handle really well. It makes you feel like you really are, like, riding a bike. So, you know, they're well worth the value if you do enjoy your bike games and you do like playing um, uh, with motocross or GP bikes. And then... There, there is no experience of a match than having a handlebar. I mean, you could use a racing wheel, sure, but, it, I mean, you know, it doesn't feel like you're riding a bike, moving a wheel. These things, when you use them, they do. They make you feel like you are riding a bike. It is so much more enjoyable, and it makes it more of a, a simulation experience. You could say you feel like you're on the bike. You feel like you are bike racing. So, overall, if you are a bike racing fan, then you should get one of these ones. These are the Thrustmaster Free Solar Bikes. Like I say, whatever platform, PS2, PC, whatever you prefer, um, they both work fairly well, and they do the job that they're supposed to, and of course, being Thrustmaster, they do, they, they are quite quality products. Um, like I said before, I would recommend probably using the desk desktop position rather than the sit-on position, because um, these things, they are pretty weak. They do break. Like, um, basically, I got one of these with um, basically the actual PS2 version. I also got one for the PC version, but that one came in the post broken, and the seller said that it broke when he used it. So, yeah, they do break. So just be aware of that. And they usually snap about here, like where that flange is. So, yeah, that's usually when they break, just there. They get a small crack, and then they snap. Because it's only really, like, really a couple pieces of plastic holding it. So it's not that strong. They could have probably thought of a better method to actually have you sit on the actual bike. And I mean, really, like I said, when you have this, it's really right up close to you. So you feel like you got the handlebars right by your stomach almost. Um, and you, you sort of like, you've got your hands all cramped up like pretty much right here. So if you can, either use it like this and deal with it slipping around. Hook it to a desk or even just um, have it like sitting in between your legs, like even without the stand, just like that and using it. So I think that's a much better way to use it than, say, using the other way, because you're probably not going to even break the thing. Even if you have, like, a coffee table or something, it's going to be a lot more enjoyable for you. So, yeah, overall, great product. I'd recommend it for any kind of bike racing fan. Um, where you, so you got one for PC, you got one for PS2. Choose whatever platform that you like and go for it. Really awesome controllers. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I'm Sharky Gamer. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll have heaps more controller and accessory reviews up very shortly. Leave a comment down below if you feel like it, and hit that like button if you like that video.
Thanks for watching, guys.